In this home theater builder series video, I'm talking about projection screens. Screens are an important part of your home theater experience. They're the focal point of everything in a video-based projection system. And a great screen lets the image draw you in. A poorly chosen screen will take you right out of the content. As such, with screens, there's a tons of options and tons of logistics. Size, acoustically transparent, color, ambient light rejecting, aspect ratios, fixed versus rolled, motorized, constant height or constant width, and more. I'll go through these various logistics and discuss what I chose for my room and why my screen is a Stewart film screen, 135 inch seam and neve in a 169 aspect ratio fixed frame. In my pre-planning video, I talked about how defining early elements of your project will automatically answer questions later on for you. And that was the case for my screen. As I was working in a fixed space with no intention to rebuild, that immediately set two screen logistics. One, I wasn't going acoustically transparent as my front array speakers and all of my speakers for that matter were going to be in the room and the towers were going to be on the floor. Two, I really had no reason for any type of roll up or motorized screen either. So one single fixed frame screen hung on the wall met all of my goals. I wasn't interested in any complex masking or multiple aspect ratios either. Partly because I felt it wasn't really necessary and partly because I'd rather spend the money on other performance parts of the room. What I did do to dress up the screen presence was drape the front wall with velvety curtains and I installed the screen offset from the wall. I affixed mounting boards to the wall and hung the screen on those. It gives it a three-dimensional floating aesthetic backed by the curtains. I think it looks really great and folks tend to notice it and compliment that aspect of the room regularly. The next thing I had to define was screen color and if I had any need for an ambient light rejection. I chose to go straight white. So screens come in all kinds of shades of white to near black nowadays. But if you have a light controlled space, I don't really think you need anything other than a modest gain white screen. In my case, the room itself is closed door and blacked out. I have no real intention of spending time in there or using the room with the lights on. So while gray screens and ambient light rejection and all that have their place in its cool technology in its own right, it's wasteful spending if you don't really need it. Plus, Special screens tend to always come with caveats. For example, a very high gain screen can often hotspot and special screens also often have directional or cone based reflection. That means image quality falls off as you move out of the sweet spot or off center. Our seating is pretty wide and I wanted to make sure that everybody had a consistent viewing experience from my screen regardless whether they were sitting in the middle or sitting off on one of the chases on the sides. Next, size and aspect ratio. The fact that my speakers are in the room and I was doing front projection means that the light had to shine through a channel between the towers. The speakers themselves could also only go so wide before I ran out of room and I wanted them at least a few feet off of each sidewall. So I was considering 135 inch or 150 inch but 150 would have just pushed things too far too tight. I experimented by throwing different size images on the wall itself having had the, a projector before purchasing the screen and I found 135 was the more balanced choice. It's it's plenty big and immersive and of course smaller images retain more brightness so there's that benefit also. Size and aspect ratio in addition are linked and I went 16 by 9. A 16 9 135 inch screen is just shy of about 10 feet wide. I could have gone for an ultra wide aspect ratio screen but no matter what 10 foot fit my space and width between well positioned left and right tower speakers. So for me there was really no reason to go ultra wide. An ultra wide image in my room was going to be 10 foot wide regardless, but on an ultra wide screen, 16.9 content would have been smaller due to the constrained height. It was a smarter call then for me to take the 16.9 aspect ratio for larger 69 imagery as the ultra wide would never get wider than 10 foot. I think many folks default to considering ultra wide screens for their theaters, considering them more cinematic for high end spaces, and they make sense if going wider would make for too large of a 16 by 9 image which can be the case. As such, constant image height would be the better call. But for me, the 10 foot wide 169 image is not too big, so constant image width was the right call. Had I gone for the 150 though, perhaps I would have been better off with an ultra wide screen or else it would have gotten much taller in the 169 ratio. Of course, my screen choices would have been different if my room dimensions had been different, my seating dynamics had been different. So you need to make the right decision based on the holistic view of your project. And screens are an item of pretty massive cost disparity as well, meaning you 
you can spend a few hundred dollars and pick up a screen on Amazon to spending many thousands if you buy a high-end Stewart screen. I think the SEMA line though was an incredible value play. It's a top-end Stewart screen, but they just constrained the line a little bit in terms of its logistics to offer them at lower prices, meaning you can only get certain sizes and aspect ratios, which was a major reason I was choosing between 135 and 150, because that's what the SEMA was available in. But regardless, those were the kind of the right dimensions for my room anyway. But even with the constraints of the SEMA line, it's still a Stewart screen with Stewart quality and performance. So as long as your needs are met within the logistics of what they offer, it's a really great buy. And I'm not being confident compensated to say that I purchased it I've been using it for a few years and I think it was an excellent part of my room but a screen is something that'll hang in your space for a long time and you really want to plan it carefully and make a good purchase source devices projectors audio equipment all of that stuff advances in time and often fairly quickly with new models every year but not a screen so thanks for watching let me know if you have any questions in the comments smash the like and subscribe buttons every time you do your HDR performance gets just a little bit brighter